It is a hot one in South Mississippi. I don't know what made me decide to do a welding video on a day like today. It is some kind of hot. And I do have fans, but I can't run them because of video. You know, it's just gonna be too noisy. The weld machines don't make enough noise. But I wanna do a quick video. I hope, hopefully it won't run too long. I always say that and I always end up running 20 minutes. But regardless, I just wanna kinda show you how to mirror weld, or it's really something you can't show. It's something you've got to practice with, but I can at least show you how to set the mirror up and what to look for to give you the best chance at learning how to do it and getting good at it. And getting good at it just takes practice, 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 practice. And uh, if it's something you want to try to learn and add to your skill, if you're already a proficient welder, then hey, this video might just be for you. And uh, I'll be using this mirror holder right here. I got this off of Amazon here a while back. This is similar to the one I used to use at Shipyard, except it was all black, but it had these knuckles like this to where you could adjust this anywhere you wanted, magnetic base. But I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in getting one of these. It's pretty long and uh, if you need to get it higher, you could always put some angle iron up or stick it to that, just whatever. But that's the one I'll be using. We're going to go ahead and get started with it. And let me just show you a few things. And if you like this kind of content, let me know in the description box and I'll do more of it. All right, I've got my machine set at 105. I'm using a 70S2 welding rod. You can use 70S2, 70S3, 70S6. 70S6 is a really good rod for open roots. I have a backing plate on this, so this should do just fine. And I've got a number eight cup. And I am using a foot controller. We'll try this amperage and see how we're going to do. But the first thing you got to do is just look down in your mirror. I wish I could show you this, but you've got to be able to see your puddle. Tell you what, let me get my phone and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You might not be able to actually see me welding, but at least you can see what I can tell you what I'm doing here. I would start down here. You just want to be able to see your tungsten, which means you're going to see your puddle and you would just advance this up. So hope that gives you some sort of idea what I'm getting ready to do here. All right, we got a ground hooked up. We should be ready to go. And I can see all that just fine. Let's get us an arc established. I'm going to try to freehand this. Alright, I actually think I can turn it up a little bit. But I'm going to take this phone and I'm just going to show you what it looks like so far. Because I know you can't really see that before I turn any cameras off, show you where I'm at right now. All right, that's not really in focus. It is a little bit there. You can see where I got started. And the thing about mirror welding is you have to constantly adjust this mirror as you're advancing up to where you get a good shot with your eye. You gotta be able to see what you're doing. So I'm at 105, I'm gonna go up to about 115. That's just, a, I mean, it's flowing fine, but it's on the bottom side of where I like it. And uh, for any of you guys that's wanting to start to learn how to weld, that's one of the first things you gotta learn is how to know when you're too cold or too hot. If you're just really gouging out and undercutting bad, you're, you're entirely too hot. It's really a no-brainer. I mean, you can just tell that. Your eyes will tell you everything you need to know. If you're too cold, it just simply won't flow. It'll try to ball up on you and such as that. All right, that looks pretty good. Here we go. Now, if the rod gets in your way, you may have to bring it off to the side. And we are probably about almost halfway up. Let me give you a shot of that. Try to get that in focus. Tell you what, let me come around the backside. 
then I'll just do it like this. Yeah, right there. Now keep in mind, I am definitely out of practice, but we're getting her done. Not to mention it's extremely hot out here. I'm not making up excuses. It's just, I don't function as well when it's this kind of heat. Knowing how and where to set that mirror, the only thing can teach you that is experience. But the biggest thing I can tell you is just make sure you can see your rod, make sure you can see your puddle. All right, that's doing all right. I tell you what, I wish I had my eyes back like I used to have. I can't see near as good as I could when I was a young man, but I'm actually surprised it's looking as good as it is. I'm using a cheater lens for anyone wondering. Whoop, it's the first time I dipped my tungsten. And I'm almost to the top. We're going to call that good enough. I could keep going, but I need to clean that tungsten. Anytime you stick a tungsten, stop, stop what you're doing and clean it. So what I would recommend if you're going to start learning how to mirror weld is I would start on something kind of easy and just progressively get it more and more difficult. All right, I got my mirror holder positioned to where I can see the back of this. And I know I can see my arc all the way across. Now I've already got, let me show you. It's just a practice piece when I first got this machine. But if you can see in that mirror, see if I get it in focus. That's got some TIG weld across the back of it. That's where I first tried this machine out. That's what it looks like in the mirror to me. Now it's a downhand weld, which is gonna be your easiest out of all of them. You know, once you master that, move into vertical, and then overhead is going to be almost as easy as flat like this. It, it truly is, in my opinion. But to me, that's kind of an easy weld. Now, I did jack my heat up to 100. But like the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. And that's true with really pretty much everything. These are 718s, which is a low hydrogen rod, and they have to stay in like a, um, a rod oven. So what I do is I just keep them in the packet they came in. Then when I get ready to actually use them, I'll put them in a toaster oven for an hour or so at 250 degrees. Let it push all that, that moisture out of them. Just some tips and pointers. Hopefully it does you some good. I always like to bend my rods. The only problem with that is sometimes if you bend it, and if you're really running hot, sometimes that's a burn off right here. But it just helps me get that angle I'm looking for. Now, I do have spare mirrors because if you do a lot of stick welding, you're gonna have spatter getting on your mirrors. A lot of times it'll break them. So you will need to purchase some some more mirrors this size. I've got about five or six of them put away. All right, let me close my hood. Get a right angle. And that's a prime example of what I was just saying. 
If you will, hot enough, that will actually burn in half. All right, let's take a look and see how we did. And this is through a mirror, guys. So, definitely something I need to brush up on. But let's just take and, oh yeah, that flux is coming right off, which is a good sign. Give it a little brush. Now I will show you what it looks like. It's not beautiful, but it definitely gets the job done. It's not horrible, but yeah, there it is. I'll take that all day long. And keep in mind, that's looking through a mirror. So mirror welding isn't as hard as what it might sound like, but it does require a lot of practice. And the only way to ever get there is just start doing it. All right, I'll be right back with you guys and I'll close this video out. All right, guys, that's just a few pointers that might can help you out if you're wanting to kind of learn this technique for mirror welding. It's really something you got to teach yourself. I, I'm kind of limited to what all I can show you. And I will tell you, this heat has been a big factor out here today. I will probably revisit this at some other point, maybe just some welding tricks and tips and things like that once fall gets here and it really cools off. And uh, it would be different if I could run my fan, but I can't even run my fan because of the video. So normally, like in a working situation, you would have blowers blowing on you, keeping you cool. You got to have that, especially in a shipyard environment. And that's where most of my welding experience comes from, especially the mirror welding part of it. I think in all the time that I did work construction, there was only one time that I actually had to mirror weld. And I was actually a pipe fitter on that job and I had a welder and the guy that dug the ditch to set this pipe in, it was chill water coming off the chillers and uh, going into the building. And it was probably five, six foot deep. I don't, really don't remember. And we had to make a tie in right where the ditch stopped. It was enough for the pipe, but there was only that much room behind this 90 degree that come up. We, we was gonna make a field weld right there, just a horizontal weld. The other one was already made. And so we put a riser going up that was leaving the ground and going into the building. Well, he could not make it at all. He said, man, we're going to get this ditch dug out more. I said, hang on, let me look. Cause I had all the shipyard experience. Long story short, I don't even remember how we found a mirror, but somebody found a mirror and I just shoved it in the dirt and I turned it to where I could see what I was doing. And I, I finished that well that he was working on. And it just totally amazed him and everybody watching. They're like, what the heck? But man, <coughs> I'm telling you, that's everyday life if you're in a shipyard or boat yard or anything like that. It's just a real good technique to learn because you might have some projects like up under a, a truck or something. You're welding a frame and you cannot get to the backside. Practice with it. Get good at it. And that's the only way to get good at it is just to practice and really know your machine. Now, I did use my Prime, Prime Weld 225X TIG welder. I'm loving this machine, guys. If y'all are interested in getting one of these, I'll have a link in the description to um, Amazon. And I am an affiliate with Amazon. I would get a small commission from that. It's no extra charge to you. It's just a little thank you from them. And trust me, it's not much. But I can't speak good enough about this machine for the price. It does really good. It's done everything I needed to do. And eventually I would like to get set up for Meg and Flux Core in this little garage of mine and do some videos on that as well. But uh, that's all in the future as I can afford to do that. So, but I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope you did get something from it. But if you want to see more tips, tricks, more in-depth videos, let me know. And uh, like I said, it'll probably be fall because I've got to let it get comfortable in here. Because if I'm not comfortable, I'm not going to weld too good. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm way, way, way out of practice. And uh, I'm having to kind of relearn myself as we go. But I think I showed you enough to at least give you a head start. Now, the funny thing about mirror welding is it's kind of like shaving or combing your hair. You don't think nothing about that because you've trained yourself to do it. Mirror welding is the same thing. Now, I remember like yesterday, I used to fight. I, I thought I was going right and I'd be going left. 
go go left, I thought I was going right, and it really messes with your head, then one day it just clicks. Something in your brain clicks, and from then on, you'll have no problem marrow welding. Even like me, right at 12 years without marrow welding, I was still able to do it. So with that said, hope you all enjoyed it. And until next time, I'm Russ Jones with Skill Savvy DIY.